headphones for you, Luke. No. I mean, yeah, I could have totally hooked the headphone amp up, and I yeah, thought I about care. it, but it was like, it's just more cables for me to run, and like, this this table's already enough of a mess, but the board up here, the mic fucking cords everywhere, and power cables, and USB. I'm like, yeah. I just didn't feel like it. No, I don't blame you. I think we have enough uh, cable management to deal with already. What What's cable management? I just let shit lay where it goes, man. <laughs> I mean, they can see it on the video, though. I mean, we got that back now, so that's kind of neat. Looking. Hey, I mean, we got everything back. Right, oh, yeah, no, it's it's sort of... Finally. Um, sort of uh, multiply functional. We're back in business. Yeah, like, as much as we can be, I suppose. Yeah. I mean... God, what a what a fucking couple months it's been. Uh, fucking couple months of nightmare. Yeah, just everything not working, everything falling the fuck apart, man. It's like God. Yeah. So, in case you guys have forgotten, in our long uh, absence, we're yep. the ungodly geeks. Yeah, I'm Joe. I'm Luke. We've been doing things, uh, dealing with so many technical issues. Yeah, life issues. Life issues for sure. Yeah, I'm, you know that's that's always fun. Mm-hmm. It's it's been interesting though. I gotta say, like you know, work's been kicking our ass, home's been kicking our ass, and then trying trying to do this, which we we love doing. This is kind of a, a sort of a escape for us. Mm-hmm. Is just it was fucked for a while, and it's kind of sucked because yeah. when we, we we would do it over the internet, it felt like a chore, which I know we've said before, but mm-hmm. it's been like a month since we've done an episode. So let's remind people we we hate it doing it over the internet. Yeah, it was it was like every once in a while we'd have a good one, or it would. Uh, it would feel all right for a bit and then it would be like 30 minutes of us just kind of filling air yeah because it was just it just i don't know it didn't feel it didn't feel organic yeah yeah no it felt forced Mm because we it was forced because we were like like i know there were a couple episodes where i just came in i just totally phoned it in i'm just like uh, oh yeah being wore out and like being at home it was just the whole time like I could be sleeping right now. Yeah. <laughs> Instead, you're sitting there in your underwear at your computer talking into a microphone. Exactly. Now, and then, being able to just sit there and talk with in my underwear was nice. I'm right, yeah. No, I'm, I'm totally on board with that. Like, <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm just barely in shorts right now because I'm at home, so I'm just going to... Yeah. You know, I'm seriously like one step away from just sitting here in my boxers. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I don't think that would be uh, very nice, you know? No. Uh, I don't know. I, I just don't like the idea of, of doing that. Just see you on camera in your fucking boxers. Well, you That'd just be wave kind of to funny. the people. Hi, guys. You know, because we got the camera back now, like we said before. So you'll have yep. an actual visual episode. Mm-hmm. And I might work on uh, getting some of the older episodes uploaded because I stopped uploading episodes to YouTube because it's just such a chore. And we, and weren't we didn't doing have much. video. Yeah, we weren't doing much. All you would have seen was that stupid which is kind of cool, kind of stupid blue background just repeating over and over again. Yeah. And then us half acidly recording. Exactly. Straight up, we were half acidly recording. Yeah, it took uh, it took a lot just to get into it. Yeah, because, I mean, we weren't getting into any sort of groove. We were just there. And then when we did start getting together, because we each have our own microphones and we would plug them, you know, plug them into my laptop, we had this really, really weird uh, echo where... It, I guess it was almost input lag type stuff. I think that's what it was. I think what ended up being some input lag type. Whereas it went on, um, it took more and more to process. I was just going to say, it's like your computer could not take the two audio inputs at the same time. Which, I mean, it's it's a de- it's a good computer. Yeah. Know, it's got a high-grade quad-core processor, and so I don't know why it couldn't, but whatever. Now we've got this nice Soundcraft uh, mm-hmm. mixer board here which is a little bit works a little bit different from our behringer board the behringer board records stereo tracks this only records mono tracks mm-hmm. so things might sound a little bit weird on these first episodes or two while i figure out how to make that work in stereo somebody's podcast i was recently listening to i want to say it was uh the gymquisition mm-hmm. they mentioned the fact that they had had a podcast accidentally get uploaded in stereo yeah. Which apparently freaked a couple people out. Oh, really? <laughs> I'm assuming because it was coming through the headsets differently. Right. Oh, that was my phone. <laughs> but uh, I just kind of thought it was funny. Right, yeah. Uh, oh, you know, I just we just got a message in our group chat from Jake, and that reminds me that I meant to tell his girlfriend not to, to not... I don't know if she should buy that PC or not, because she was asking me about a PC at work. We, have his, we yeah. have his HP Pavilion... And I'm going to throw up the air quotes for gaming PC. The $500 one? No. The $500 one is actually worth it. This is a $629 one. Uh. My issue with it is it sucks. Oh, yeah. Horribly. Um, 
Hold up a minute, guys. I gotta, I gotta reply to this text, and I cannot talk and reply at the same time because I'm kind of stupid. Yeah. Um. Well, I well, I remember the five hundred gig, the five hundred dollar one. It was, uh, it was decent. It had like a nine seventy, uh, GTX nine seventy. It had or an Nvidia nine seventy. No, it had a, it had ten sixty. Did it have its? Oh, okay. it had so 1060. It was even better than that. Um. Yeah, uh, it had a 1060 and I think 16 gigs of RAM for 500 bucks, and it was like amazing. Yeah. This one is shit. Yeah, it's 629 dollars. It has a AMD Ryzen 5 2400G, which is the only truly good thing about it. Mm-hmm. And instead of having a 1060 or a 10 whatever, it has a 1050. Oh fuck that. Um, which is like baseline. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's not even. It's a gaming PC in the sense that it's a PC that can play games. Yes. Like, my laptop here would be about as capable of it with its shitty Intel chip. I mean, okay, no, the the, the 1050 is going to be a step up. But it was like, um, it's just not, it's not worth it. And no, I, I meant to talk to her before I left, but I didn't see her. So, um, but yeah, it's like. It, it's it's one of those things where I, I don't know if I would recommend it at its price point, but if she's going to use her fifteen or extra or twenty five percent off that we got for work and Thanksgiving. Yeah, it would be a little more worth it because it would bring it down to about four seventy one plus tax. Four seventy nine is as high as this piece. Do we go. even have the other one anymore? No, I haven't seen it back there. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, we no. had a bunch of them like a year ago. Right, I want to say. Yeah, no, or we, less than a year. No, ago. no, it was like. Well, it was about a year ago because we had yeah. them for Black Friday last year. Yeah, and, and they were we worth didn't sell any of them, and we had a bunch left. And now, um, speak of that's something I was going to talk about. Walmart is getting attempting to jump into the PC uh, gaming. gaming market, right? With their own brand of like, yeah, kind of like how Newegg has, or is it Newegg that has Cyber Power and Amazon yeah. has. I don't know what Amazon has. Amazon has their own thing. I don't actually, know. I actually, actually don't what the think brand Amazon has their own thing. No, I don't, I don't think probably they do. carry other people's. Yeah, they they totally do. I know they have carry a cyber cyber PC and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, there was that video that you were watching that. Um, yeah. yeah, he uh, he ordered the most expensive one that uh, that Walmart offers online, right. which was like twenty five hundred, twenty six hundred dollars. I don't remember. Right, it was over two grand. Right, it was an expensive. Maybe it was twenty one hundred. But um, so when he opens it up and starts going through it, finds out, oh, it is the next model down. Yeah. So the instead of having a 1080 Ti, it had like a 1070. Mm-hmm. Which is um, still not a bad card at all. Not a bad all. card, but it's... All right, Jake's calling me. <laughs> it's far below a 1080 Ti. Hi, Jake. Can you hear me, Jake? All right, I can barely hear you. Let me turn the volume up here. All right, Jake. So she was asking me about that HP PC that we sell back there for, uh, I think it was six twenty nine. And I I don't know that I could recommend it. It's five. It was five ninety nine online. Okay. But you're going to use your twenty five percent, right? Okay, here's the problem. The way our computers work, when you do a price override, you can no longer apply a discount to it. That's what I figured. Yeah. Um, here's the thing about that, though. I did take a look at it um, because I told you I would. And I meant to go find you before I left, but we were kind of in a hurry uh, when I was leaving. Um, and I just completely forgot about it. I, I don't know that at 629 it would be worth it. Um, but with the discount, brings it down to about... 471 plus tax of course 479 is about where that pc should top out um i like i was talking to luke about it it's a it's a gaming pc in the sense that it's a pc that can play some games it's like a few years behind well no it, it's yeah, got it's got like... modern parts yeah it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's not... like baby's first gaming pc yeah um like your PS4 is probably going to have more graphical fidelity than it. Being straight up honest with you, it will run probably what you want to play right now, though, because I'm assuming you want to play um, like 
Fortnite or Overwatch or yeah, oh, it'll Skyrim, probably, yeah. It, it, it would play mod at Skyrim. Um, I I wouldn't be throwing like the 4K textures at it or no. anything like that. Like if you're gonna go that route, don't don't go that route. Because, just do the uh, HD texture pack and you're good. Yeah, just like don't don't go for like JK White runs 4K 8K texture pack. Like you're not <laughs> gonna be able to do that. I think it only has two gigs of VRAM, uh, and that is just trash. Yeah, yeah. like. It's just trash. It's not a lot. Like for six twenty nine, you're getting ripped off. For four seventy nine, that's about what it should cost. If you're, yeah. if you're there now, um, have them look and see if we have that last year's model HP. Yeah, last year we had like one for around five hundred bucks. That was absolutely worth five hundred bucks. Yeah. In fact, if it we had it now and it was six twenty nine, it would still be worth six twenty nine. Yeah, it like, was absolutely. like legitimately a good deal on a PC that it like introductory gaming PC. Yeah, but uh, this one, like I said, this one's baseline. Yeah, absolutely baseline, not worth six twenty nine. Yeah, with a discount. Yeah, I, uh, mm. I, I definitely believe that. Yeah. Especially coming from Walmart, like I don't expect top quality. I just I need a new PC. Yeah. You know, I, enjoy gaming i love drawing and stuff like that so i wanted something that you know would be able to cover all bases um, now. yeah um, i mean it'll get you started uh my 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 big qualm with it uh, would be upgrading later mm-hmm. because typically pre-built systems like that are like that's it they're designed to be just that um you don't have a lot of room to put other yeah, parts in like sitting there buying that computer and then say six months down the line replacing the video card um, if you had the room, you also would have to replace the power supply at that point. And um, it, it's whether or not that tower would be big enough or if it's proprietary or something like that. And if it's proprietary, you're probably going to have a problem fitting another power supply in there. <laughs> because it's going to have just enough power to run what's in it. Uh. Yeah. Um, but like I said, for getting started... It would be fine for that. And then if later down the line you get some money together and you want to build like a beefy gaming rig, you can take that thing and turn it into a file server with ease. Yeah. And then you can so throw like a couple big hard drives in it and, you know, store porn and movies and music on it. And if you, you know, like you said, you like drawing, start a Patreon and start drawing some niche porn, you'll have money coming in with no problem. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, like there's a furry artist that makes like 350 grand a year. Yeah, yeah, he's oh, making video games, Jesus. but right, yeah, it, it's it gets really weird yeah. and strange. Draw but... furry porn, pony porn, draw some kind of porn, you'll make money. Yep. Okay. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Exactly. Oh yeah. The more extreme, the better. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fur affinity, whatever the hell. So yeah, if you're buying it. Yeah. Yep. yep. Yeah, so if you want to buy it just to get started, well, that'll be fine. But I'm going to tell you, it's probably not going to last you uh, more than a, maybe a year with those stats, with those specs. Those specs are really, really just baseline. They really, really are. Two gigs of VRAM on that video card. Like, my video card, the one I have in my computer right now, costs as much as that computer. So, oh, Jesus. yeah. But it'll get you started. I mean- Um, maybe, maybe not. I mean, that's what I did when I built, when I first built mine. Um, it's an option. Like I went to Newegg and found some of their, uh, like essentially it's, it's not a built computer. They just have all the parts together. You buy it, comes with a case and everything you need to get started. It's basically a combo back, combo back. Yeah. Yeah. You, you go on there and there's just, there's a listing for a thing, and it's got the motherboard, CPU, the all the stuff you need to put it together. Yeah, if you expect to get, like, a grand or whatever that is just spend money, you don't have to worry about spending it on anything else. Yeah. Um, you could build something halfway decent with that. Like, really decent. You could build something several steps up from that for 629 Yeah. Yeah, I mean... And it's going to last me much longer. It's going to last you at least a year or two longer. Yeah. Bare minimum, like... Like my computer, I built it 2015. It's still going strong now. So, mm. but uh, I mean, if you wanted to buy it right now because you get that 25 percent off, like I said, it's totally worth it at 4.79. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you wanted to do that, 
I would say maybe do it if you want to play something right now. If you have the ability to be patient, you know, maybe wait, uh, buy something else with this, buy like a nice TV, a nicer TV or, or monitor. Or, yeah, a yeah, nice whatever. monitor or something and just kind of hold off and uh, we could definitely help you build something later. Yeah. I mean, if I wasn't working at Walmart, this is literally what I would do. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> yeah yeah well that's also not that difficult though so that's that, that, that bar is not yeah. set very high yeah yeah i know i know can't blame them but i'll say you can i mean, I mean you, you totally can blame them no you, exactly you, you can totally blame jake it's fine <laughs> oh, Jesus. all right uh, well, i think well, that gives me my answer thank you hey no problem yeah Tell him to buy a Razer headset or a Seinhauser or something decent if we have it. Um, if he's wanting to buy it from our store, I'm not sure if we would have anything worth buying. Uh, I mean, Turtle Beach is probably the best thing we sell. Yeah. And even, Razer's not bad. Yeah, I don't think we sell Razer headsets, do we? I think so. I thought we did. Either way, I mean, tell him just don't spend over like 50 bucks unless it's Bose, Seinhauser, um, G-Skill... Something like that. Um, I mean, you could always go the route that I went and drop $350 on a microphone and a pair of headphones. Yeah. That's what I did. I bought a $250 pair of headphones and a $130 microphone, and that's what I used. Yeah. Because I'm stupid. Obviously, our store doesn't have much variety. Wouldn't it be better to like save up, go online? Right. Yeah. I um, mean, it depends on what. If he's wanting it for gaming, like that, you're gonna, you're not gonna get that much of um, a real benefit out of spending like the 120 bucks I did on recently on a Xbox headset. Yeah. No. No. Um, you're, not. you're not gonna get. You're also not gonna get anything out of. Like, the, the headphones I bought were for more than just gaming. Yeah. Because they're great for music, too. And they're really tough, and they're going to last a, a long time, because that's why I bought them. Yeah. For, so. like, general use, like Jake does, I mean, he could spend 20 bucks on a, just a really cheap Ed, LG Yeah, no, uh, he's going to he's gonna break everything he gets. Yeah. Tell like, him to yeah. be very careful if he spends over 20 bucks. Actually, need to pass along, but I, I ended up buying him like a, a, a for now pair of ear, uh, headphones. Yeah, he loses those Amazon, a lot. So I'm just yeah. hoping that he can hold He loses those a lot. <laughs> he does. He really does. Parts just go missing and he get it the day before. I understand it. I don't know how it happens. I don't know when it happens, but God, does it happen. Yeah, he. I I've seen Jake with Ooh. more pair of earbuds than literally everyone stock. else I know combined. Like a different pair every week. Yeah. For like a year there, for a while, he was he was having a different pair every week because he'd lose them or he'd break them. It's like, dude, what are you doing? So. He switches yeah, headphones he... like I buy cell phones. Just all the time buying cell phones. Don't even fucking need them. Yeah, tell him to look for the Turtle Beach Recon 50p. It's 40 bucks. He's going to serve as an... He's looking for a, a, a PC headset, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, what happened to the one I gave him? It was like a $75 real high-end headset, 7.1 surround sound and everything. Was it? You gave him that? Why would you do that? Because I bought my... I bought my head, my microphone and my headphones and didn't Hatched need them that. anymore. Because I had already given him like a $20 LG he busted. <laughs> What's that? Was it the red and black pair? Yeah. The microphone broke on it. Oh. It broke off. Oh. We had it duct taped for the longest time. Jesus Christ, Jake. Yep. That's Jake. Practically packaging at that point. Fantastic. Well, okay, I I, I tried at least. I gave him a thing. <laughs> I tried to help my they, buddy they out. They lasted a good while for being Jake. Right. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I think they survived one move, which is surprising for Jake. That's true. Surprising for a lot of people, actually. That's how my turtle beaches. My originally pair got broke. 
Yeah, I've lived here forever, so. Yeah, there you go. All right, well, go buy yourself a PC or not, Kels, and uh, tell Jake to look for that Turtle Beach headset, and, you know, we're going to get back to doing things. Yep. All righty. Thank you, guys. No Bye. problem. Bye. <laughs> well, that was fun. Well, that was interesting. Yeah. We had our first call in on our podcast. We're like real radio d- DJs. I, I don't want to be a radio DJ. That's too much either. work, too much pressure. I'm I'm a lazy dude. Huh. Like, good morning, Cincinnati. Do we have to start playing fart music noise, now? Fart noise. No, no. Oh my. <laughs> no, we we don't do that. No, <laughs> we're we're better than that. We should get a soundboard. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh, sorry. Guys. Straight up. That's an straight up. Joke. Straight up. I I actually did for a while there. Um, consider getting like an archer soundboard yeah and just integrating random archer noises i mean i totally downloaded a um anime soundboard on my phone (laughs) fully intending to at some point just be hitting random noises and it just no it's not it's not us no it's really not leave that to like the ign podcasts or whoever the fuck does that yeah they can they can do that we're we're gonna just have a conversation yeah Uh, that actually reminds me one thing i was looking uh into doing um and i know there's got to be a plug-in for it but like you know how we have our tagline the website says so so geeky it's ungodly or whatever yeah um have that so it it randomly changes every time you load a page oh. so like and and throw up a few different ones like one tagline i came up with which i thought was funny was we make good background noise <laughs> there you go because i mean podcasts are yeah like basically like like every now and then you'll sit there and, and let's really go in on one podcast and listen to it. Like you do that with something like hardcore history. You can totally do that with that. Yeah. But uh, I don't believe where we fit that niche. You, you listen to us in the background. You and, listen to us while you're taking a shit. Right. While you're doing, you know, doing your taxes. I don't Maybe know. you're doing your dishes. Yeah. Maybe you're doing your dishes while you're doing your taxes. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know how you do things. I'm not going to judge you. It seems like a very. While taking a shit. While taking a shit. Yeah. It seems very unsanitary. Maybe maybe a little destructive taxes, yeah um but hey uh, you do you man we're not gonna judge you exactly but uh yeah we In are definitely drive, background right? podcasts are really for like drives and yeah when I'm just doing mindless work i i wish i love them for i i don't listen to podcasts anymore and it's not because i'm jaded or anything i just i have lost interest yeah which sucks because like i love hearing neil degrasse tyson talk and of course uh kevin smith who got us started and all this yeah but it's like eh I don't know what it is. I'll see a new episode on, on a podcast I love, like tech stuff or mm-hmm. something like that, and I'll just go, oh, whatever. And I swipe it away, and like, and then I think, in the, and the voice in the back of my head goes, why oh, you do that? Just listen. Like, I don't want to. I don't know what, like, I, I haven't, I still listen to them all the time. Um, but, I mean, I get times where I'm just at work, and I'm like, I don't, I need music. Yeah. I, I, instead of podcasts. But I, I have to have something playing. Music when is, I'm at uh, work. Music. Either music, podcasts, yeah. audiobooks. Right. Um, fucking, oh my God. If we could ever get sponsored by Audible, I will just blow, like, fellatiate them all day. I love Audible. I mean, I'd be down for that. Like, I, I, for me, music music has always helped me focus. Yeah. Like, since I was a kid. And that actually reminds me of a story when I was at Dayton Job Corps. Um, we had an administrator there. I don't remember his name, but he was a complete shithead. Yeah. And one day... Um, I was in my computer repair class where I learned to repair computers mm-hmm. and um, I'm sitting there and everybody's fucking off, fucking around, doing whatever, you know, just talking, uh, just whatever, talking, whatever. I'm sitting over in my, at my desk. I had my earbuds in and I'm legitimately studying material, yeah. right? Like I'm sitting there going over, over test material mm-hmm. and the rule, there was a rule um, and admittedly I was violating it and uh, I'm sitting there. The rule was no headphones in, right? Yeah. So I'm sitting there, I got my headphones in, I'm listening to music, and I'm legitimately working. Like, I am the only person in this classroom working. There's like 19 other students. I'm in my just corner like, yeah, okay, I'm yeah. reading this and taking notes and shit. The fucker walks in, decides to do like a tour, walks me up to me, singles me out, pulls me out into the uh, hallway, and say, yeah, I'm sorry, sir, you know, music helps me focus. He's like, no, it doesn't. And if he had said that to me now, I would give that dude such a tongue lash. Like, who the fuck do you think you are to tell me what makes helps me focus? Yeah. Motherfucker, you don't know me. Well, it's that he's probably that old style teaching of they don't that they 
like back when we were in elementary school and even before that, yeah, they teaching was you have to do it our way or no way at all. Yeah. Where now we know that people just don't learn the same way. Lots of people learn different ways. Yeah. yeah. We know for a fact that music is one of those things that helps you retain information. Yep. Um, even things like smoking. I can't remember. Chewing what gum. The, Chewing gum, yeah, yeah. Uh, like smoking cigarettes, uh, being like smoking marijuana, different things like that legitimately help your brain retain information. Yeah, uh, it's I, I can't remember the term, um, but it's not it's not a like it's not oh well someone just serious just saying that because you want to listen to your music. No, it's it's legitimate. It helps yeah, yeah, study. no, it helps me keep my focus. I remember being told in high school by our psychology teacher, "Don't listen to if anybody tells you." Um, not to listen to music, uh, when you're studying stuff, don't listen to them. Yeah. Go ahead and like put on some like low, it doesn't have to, you know, be any extreme music. Yeah. Uh, as Just... long as it's not distracting, it's perfect. Yeah. I so mean, I listen to like classical music all throughout high school. I mean, I there's, a, there's a lot of different things that I can listen for me, uh, just about any type of music that I, I listen to and I listen to a very wide variety of stuff. Come on, man. Don't make Oops. a mess in the studio. It's empty. <laughs> but, uh. Yeah, no, like just about any type of music can help me focus because what it does is it tunes everything around me out. Exactly. So it, it's like, all right, I got this, so I can just go, boom, whatever I'm focusing on is what I'm focusing on. Mm-hmm. And that's, you know, I'll do that. I'll do that in, in there. And that's that's how I get things done so quickly when on days where I want to do things quickly. It's, I pop an earbud in, I have my walkie, I turn it down a little bit. Yeah. And I just, I just turn on something, you know, Eminem or... Uh, Mike Shinoda or uh, fucking Slipknot, whatever, and I just go. Slipknot's great. I, I, Slipknot being such an extreme energy band, they're perfect for like doing the for working and just focusing on work. Right, right, yeah, I, and I do that when I go around and collect items around the store or mm-hmm. when I'm working freight because I just I focus in on that. But I still have that in in case yeah. somebody needs to get a hold of me and I'm still able to go. Oh yeah, what you need? Okay, no problem, got you. But it's, or when I'm filling the tills or whatever, like it helps. And yeah, I'm still, you know, it's funny too because I mean that it's been uh, what it was 2006 when I was there, 2007. So it's been like 11, almost 12 years, and I still get angry mm-hmm. over him telling me what helps me focus. Like he yeah. fucking knows. Like it's still something that legitimately fires me up. Well, it's like telling somebody. Uh, I remember having a teacher, and I think. The student, the, somebody was saying something about, um, well, it helps me to learn visually or something like that. Yeah, I don't remember right, what it was. Right. And the teacher said, no, that's just modern trash. That's not real. It's like, no, apparently you're out of the fucking loop. Some people legitimately learn visually. Some learn, it just, you learn different ways. Yeah, some, yeah, for sure. Like, I learn by doing. Yeah. Like, you, you give me a basic explanation, and then I just do it. Exactly. And once I do it, and I do it that success, successfully, that, that first successful time, mm-hmm. I just got it. And yeah. I just go. So, yeah, I mean, you know, not everybody can learn memorization and rote. Like, not yeah. everyone's just going to remember. Like, sometimes you just got to do a thing. For me, it was, if I took notes, I just had to write it. Yeah. And I never had to look at my notes again. If right. I wrote, if I actually paid attention and copied down whatever they were teaching or whatever the instructor was saying or writing or had right. PowerPoints, right. whatever, if I wrote it down, I was done. I right. would pass the test, no problem. It was fine. I never had to look back to it. That was uh, one thing I never did in school. Like, I never yeah. took notes. Yeah. Um, because as you were explaining it to me and we were doing it, it would just it would yeah. click and I would know. And then test time comes, I'd, I'd get like 89 or higher. Like I mm-hmm. never, that was, that was one thing that I was really good at. Yeah. Like I still, to this day, I'm not a hundred percent sure how I learned some things because there were some things you just didn't do. Right. Yeah. But there are things where I'm just like, okay, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And it just clicked for me. Math was one of those things. I was really good at math. Always, yeah. always great at math. Um, I don't know though. I was terrible at algebra. I was good at geometry. I, but I think a big part of that is, and, and everyone kind of has this experience. It always sometimes depends on the teacher, yeah. and their teaching style. I mean, and I had a, an advanced algebra. I had an absolutely awful teacher, and I just didn't get any of it. And then my geometry teacher, she was really great, and I actually was engaged and you know tried to learn the shit. Um, I had the opposite. I don't experience. remember any of it now. Yeah, no, I had, I had the complete opposite experience. Um, yeah. Or maybe it wasn't the teacher necessarily being bad, um, but I, I'm good at all forms of math. 
Yeah. Like even geometry, despite not being a very artistic or visual person in a way, but I'm very good at all forms of math. Um, it's just that's it's math and science are my my two topics. Uh, those are the things that I am great at. And uh, I failed my geometry. I passed my algebra and my advanced algebra classes. <laughs> and it's not through my failing. It's not through any talent I didn't have. It was the fact that in geometry, my teacher was cool. But he himself was a distraction. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. I've like, had you know, you, you, teachers like that, too. Yeah, where you have those really, really cool teachers. Like, oh, this guy is cool. He's funny. He jokes. And he may. And unfortunately, I, I, you're not learning anything. I'm not learning anything. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's not a failing on him. I'm not saying he was a terrible person or anything. He was a great teacher. He was a f- cool dude. I loved him. He was Mr. Paddock. Yeah. And if he somehow listens to this, hey, man, you're cool as fuck. If you're still alive, man, you're still kicking. Because, dude, he was, he was gray haired when I was in high school. And he's yeah. been, you know, all. 15 years now so i don't know maybe maybe he's gone but you know yeah like he was he was cool i loved him but uh uh and he had a great teaching style the guy taught stuff i for some for some for me though because i'm a goofball and i love goofing off it i none of it was ever absorbed yeah <laughs> so i failed stuff but i mean i look back on it now i can i can do the math mm-hmm. you know like geometry like i can figure the stuff out i can do it i just don't I just uh, when it came to uh, algebra specifically equations yeah and different uh, all, everything it was just I had no it was partially it, it was a lot of it was me too right. was from between me and the teacher I had no desire to learn any of it at all yeah. I was already done with math as far as I was concerned dude that was and as a, soon as I found out I didn't need any more math credits yeah I was like oh I'm done with this shit right um for me that, that was me in English yeah like seriously english was f- entirely pointless in high school and i hated every second of it it was like all right english is one of those things that you, i don't know if we should even i mean maybe creative writing re- teaching kids to write teaching people because um, that's a legitimate thing yeah especially like but, professional writing and stuff yeah. like that yeah like english like, class in general though you don't need it past i mean like ninth grade yeah no i that. mean uh, like that was one thing that's that has stuck with me since yeah. that's since that class is like because uh, i had to take 11th and 12th grade english in the same year because i failed them because mm-hmm. they were boring so i sat there and i i was taking them both uh not back to back i think i would take one to go to my spanish class and then mm-hmm. come back for 12 and it was like these are seriously the exact same class it's just in this class we're going over prepositional phrases, and in this class so we're going over uh, subject and predicates. Yeah. And it's like, oh, we might be reading this Shakespeare book in this class, but we're reading a different book here. And that was literally the only difference. I'm like, what is even the point? Yeah. You know, like like I want to go to the trigonometry class. I want to go to the calculus class. I want to go to the physics class. Why am I wasting my time here? Yeah. You know, like and. Yeah, I had that same issue in 11th grade. I just, I skipped, failed that class, took summer school, failed the summer school English. Right. Um, and nothing against the teacher, but I mean, her idea of teaching English was just having us read, um, I, I'm trying, like, they were, all I can remember Kill a mockingbird. is that, no, not even. All I can remember is that they were like social justice oh. type stuff. Yeah. And then the questions weren't like, you know, what did you get out of reading this? Blah, blah, blah. What, like, what uh, emotions did they convey? What, you know, things that you would expect for an English. Right. Um, right. It was more about, like, um, it was the social justice. And I was an edgy asshole teenager at the time right. on top of like, uh, again, like I said, I absolutely had no, I had, there was just no reason to have English at that point anyway. So I was like, I didn't do anything. I didn't do any of the assignments. Yeah. I straight up yeah. told the teacher, I was like, I, I'm sorry, but I don't care. Yeah. It's, it's hard um, to, and I legitimately liked the teacher. So that was the funny part is that I just, I just stopped. It was summer school. Right. It was awful. Right. The summer school math class was such an absolute joke. Um, it was supposed to be algebra, uh, like n- normal grade algebra. Yeah. What it actually was, was like a, uh, whatever they call it, like where you have, you know, algebra, uh, college prep algebra or advanced algebra. Yeah. It was the step below normal algebra. It so was pre-algebra. Like pre-algebra. Well, yeah, I guess that's what it would be. Yeah, yeah. Or idiot algebra is what I was calling it. It's, it's like, it's where they first start throwing X's into the, fo- in the formulas. Yes. Yeah. But yeah. it would seriously be it's like, like three one, X, one three X, X equals five. Yeah. So I, I was yeah. like, are you, are you shitting me? I did this in fucking fourth grade. Yeah. 
and it was like that. It was like they just started multiplying fractions, is what I remember. And mind you, this is only like, what did they have, like two months right. worth of classes? Yeah. So we we were like two weeks in and we had started, they started us on multiplying fractions. Yeah. And the teacher didn't really get it, so I ended up teaching the class half the time. <laughs> it was it was bad, man. I, I that was the first math class where I actually felt like I got is this where I'm supposed to be? That's where I decided I was done with math. Right. Because right. I was like, if this is where I'm supposed to be, if this is where everybody is, then I'm good. Yeah. I, I have no need for any more math for my senior year. My thing is this it, can you count? Can you count accurately? Yeah. Can you keep track of numbers in your head? If you can do like if you can just count and you can keep track of numbers in your head, you don't need anything. You're else. pretty good. Yeah. Unless, unless you're going unless into you, something specific. Right. Unless you're going into a specialized field that's going to exactly. use the math, engineering, physics, uh, any almost any STEM class basically. Yeah. Fine. That's fine. Any STEM field you're going to need your advanced mathematics. Yeah. I work in retail, dude. I can count money. That's all I need to do. Exactly. Most a lot of other jobs you're not going need it um even like even going into being a pilot yeah. people that have ter- done terrible in math in high school and you know and everything else go in and when you're in pilot school it's specific to what yeah. you're doing right so it, it it's easier to get a hold of like it, it you know because it's again if you're wanting to be a pilot wanting to learn to fly generally you're going to be interested in what you're doing right it's easier to learn the uh learn what you're doing what right you're yeah being taught. i mean if you know you need to keep an altitude of forty thousand feet for however yeah. many times, you're gonna you're gonna be fine. You're gonna focus on learning that you, instead of figuring out how many pies um, Jan stole from Pete, and Pete's six feet tall, moving at forty miles an hour while the train is moving. Yeah, right. And the train is moving <laughs> slower than him for some exactly. reason. Like the tra- and he's on the train, but the train is somehow ten Solve miles for slower. X. Yeah. <laughs> and where, where does X come from? Simplify this problem. No, fuck you. <laughs> That's that was my answer. No, fuck you. Yeah, I'm not simplifying. I ended up because I didn't have enough English credits. Um, going through, I, I like, uh, I went through all the information on what you like, what you could do to get different credits. What classes counted as different things. Right. Uh, ended up finding out that you could take debate a second time, and it counted as an English credit. Oh, so man, I wish I could. Have taken I took that, a man. second year of debate, counted as an English credit. Um, I had to have like after that, I had to have electives, so I ended up taking art for a second time. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> so my senior year was seriously debate, art, English, and then construction, uh, tech. Which I sh- I wish I had, now looking back, I really wish I had taken the computer courses because they would have actually been useful to me. Right. Um, in my life, but. Construction tech was still awesome. I was outside for three hours a day, four hours a day, um, building a house with all my friends. I mean, that's fucking cool. Like, Hell yeah. I mean, I'd do that now. I like, still – our uh, like the first week we're there, uh, the first thing we had to do was dig a trench basically for the power lines. Right, right. To come through this field that was behind the, the lots where all these houses were being built by students. Right. Um, so like we're out there, you know, a couple days we're digging, no big deal. Like the third day, it starts downpouring. Oh, and shit. the uh, there are no more. It, it we have to have it done by that day. Right. So normally we would stay inside the little t- construction trailer there, but th- they were like, we don't have a choice. So we all had ponchos and we're out there in just fucking downpour up to our knees in mud, just digging at this fucking trench. It was awful. It was it was great. You know. Right. Yeah. Of course. You it was got... much better than me in class. That's for sure. I mean, anything was better than that for me, especially. Yeah. Like that, that was also another thing that was a problem where I, I hated the classroom environment. Yeah. I, I hated it. It just didn't feel like I belonged there. Because, like I, like I said, I learned by doing, not by reading, not by... Uh, like, you tell me how to do something, let me do, show me how to do it, and then let me do it, and I'll learn it. But I, I wasn't getting that in class. It was read this, read that, do this critical thinking skill that doesn't actually make you critically think and then yeah. you just move on like i i hated it so you know what maybe we should have a conversation about some recent events which oh think? yeah we do have a we have a lot that's been going on because we just spent 40 minutes talking about <laughs> literally nothing i mean we're getting back into our oh well whatever. we're getting back into our groove i know i completely so, relate i understand um recent events like we want to go back to well i mean we missed a bunch of episodes fucking super smash brothers brawl it's on our it's way all the characters. Uh, ultimate 
They had ultimate, yeah. They added furries, they, uh, another furry character. I think we talked about that. Yeah, yeah. but we didn't air the episode. <laughs> oh, that's right, because there was nothing to air. Yeah. Because ten minutes in, it went from us you talking have normally. You me. <laughs> you us talking normally to you hearing Luke six times in your microphone a second apart, yeah. which was annoying. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, Stan Lee died, man. Yeah, that's, Stan Lee that died. sucks. That's like, that's rough, man, because that dude basically owned my childhood. Mm-hmm. It, it was like, it sucked, man, when I when I sat there. But at the same time, I was like, I'm, I'm not going to be one of those people, uh, oh, they took him too soon. That dude was 95 I, yeah, it's years It's definitely, old. it's sad that he's gone. Um, like, like a lot of people, I loved the Stan Lee. Everything. Cameo. I love everything he did. Stan yeah. Lee was just this. He's was this giant personality. Yep. Um, and I love if you get if anybody gets the chance to go listen to um, Kevin Smith uh, talk about Stan Lee on either his Hollywood Babylon podcast or um, the um, Fat Man Beyond podcast. Um, Kevin Smith legitimately will like bring you to tears when he talks about the like his interactions and the way Stan Lee uh, wasn't just he wasn't just you know the creator of marvel comics he he created this persona that was built out of he loved being famous he yeah. just loved like he loved going to comic cons he, he loved, loved people being, man yeah he yeah, loved he loved, he loved having fans. fans he loved shaking you know just meet and greets and all that stuff autographs signing yeah. stuff like he was he like was that just will a cool live dude. on forever he was like a dude that genuinely loved the people you mm-hmm. know and uh speaking of what you were just uh, an interview that he did. Um, yeah. I, I don't remember if it was Kevin Smith or somebody else, but they were asking him about like Spider Man, and mm-hmm. this is this for me is what cemented Spider Man. And it was nothing. It wasn't something I realized until he put it into words. Yeah, is like Spider Man is a guy, right? He's, he's just a dude. And he has the mask on, so anybody can be Spider Man. You know, like it doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter who you are. You know, what color your skin is, anything, that mask that lets you be Spider-Man if you yeah. want. You know, and it was like, holy shit, yeah, because it totally is. And, like, you don't have to think about Peter Parker under that. It's no, just it's Spider-Man. Spider-Man is Spider-Man. Spider-Man is Spider-Man. Spider-Man is Spider-Woman. Spider-Man yes. is Spider-Woman, too. And they even did that in the comics. But it was like, when he said that, I was like, yes. And I was like, yes, that's why I love Spider-Man so much, because I could be Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. You know, my f- my friend over here who had black skin, he could be Spider-Man, too, because it didn't matter. None of that mattered. Also, Spider-Man, like, for uh, the longest time, starting out, he was a kid. He was yeah. a teenager. Yeah, absolutely. So, any, you know, he was in high school. kids, high school students, they can identify with him. And, I mean, me being me being six, seven, eight years old when, when the Spider-Man, the original animated series, was going on, mm-hmm. and I'm sitting there watching it. Spider-Man and his Spider-Friends? Yeah, man. <laughs> all that shit, man. Like, that, that resonated with me. Mm-hmm. More than anybody, um, more than any other superhero at the time, for sure. Yeah. Because, um, I mean, Iron Man was cool, but he had all the cool tech. Uh, Justice League was cool, but I'm not going to be Superman. I'm not going to be Batman. You know, I'm not going to yeah. be the Green Lantern. But Spider-Man. Spider-Man was a kid, man. He was 13, 14 years old. He was a high school student. He, he watched and as he grew up into you know, a more adult Peter Parker. He got the job at the Daily Planet. Or was it Daily Daily Planet? Bugle. Daily Bugle. One of the, it doesn't matter. It's all daily anymore. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, he, he did that. And it's like, yeah, yeah. Like Spider-Man. I could be Spider-Man. Like, Stan Lee was one of those guys that um, he was talking about being inclusive. And, yeah, absolutely. Um, being, you know, not judging people for the way they look, who they are, uh, before... Anybody anyone else, else was doing anyone it, yeah. who gives comic books shit yeah or talks about i mean it, sure there's problems in comics absolutely when it comes to misogyny and different things like oh. that however go back and look and read or go watch some of sam uh um uh stan's soap boxes yeah and he's saying stuff long before most other people were oh for sure um yeah. about uh equality mm-hmm. and not judging people and it's just that kind of stuff i, I had i didn't realize that until I went back and uh, was watching him, um, I think it was a video, Stan's Soapbox video, and just what he's talking about is like, oh, wow, that, that resonates today. And he was saying this back in, like, the um, late 60s. Yeah, when during, you know, during yeah. some of the worst civil yeah, rights civil times. rights movements yeah. where 
stuff like that would legitimately get him could get you fired could get you blacklisted from jobs could yeah you, yeah some horrible shit could because happen. you know people back then thought black people were icky yeah that they shouldn't have equal rights that it was you know, know it, like like honestly and and that's just like like it's just ludicrous it's such a ludicrous idea yeah. that that was radical then yeah let's it, treat people just treating equally. people like people but you know what it, it's still something that's that we fight today still the yeah. same fight where and not only that we're still having that same fight where we need to treat black people equally you yeah. know like it's still a thing it we it's been 40 what 50 years almost 60 years and we still haven't gotten it yeah so i don't know man but, but yeah sam sam was preaching that shit and like and when I when I found that out, because like I've never ever had an ill feeling towards him. Yeah. Like it's Stan Lee. He created he created a huge chunk of my childhood mm-hmm. between him and uh, whatever uh, <laughs> Sabat Sabat or the company that brought Power Rangers to this country from so, Japan. Cybin, Cyb, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, whatever it is. Um, someone mm-hmm. will correct us. I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Um, between like him and them and mm-hmm. DC. Whoever created the DC stuff that I grew up with, I, I, I admittedly do not know. Yeah. Um, because once again, I was a I was a cartoon kid, not a comic book kid. Um, between those three things, like he created a very like at least a third to half of my childhood because yeah. I I got up to watch the Saturday morning cartoons and at least well, he didn't he create he had a hand in creating the X Men. Yeah. Which was once I, again him, I uh, I, can't, I can't remember the other guy's name. Um, his, his right hand man, Jack Kirby, Jack Kirby. Yeah. Yeah. Him and Kirby. Um, and I believe they did Spider-Man, uh, the fantastic four first Stanley, right. Created right, right. The fantastic four, Iron Man, Spider-Man, the X-Men, right. Um, and the X-Men that was their, like, you know, their, they were trying to push, uh, the idea of civil rights in comics and stuff. Right. Which I mean, should never be a radical idea in my no, opinion, but no. whatever. Right. Um, yeah, it's just it, like he created that, and he, he and uh, he he had that hand before yeah. I even knew he was a thing, right? Because I didn't know who Stan Lee was when I was seven. No, uh, the first time he was put in like mainstream yeah. in a movie was Kevin Smith with Mallrats, right? Um, and that's the Kevin Smith tells a story of how he wrote. Obviously, he wrote Stan Lee in. He, as a character yeah um and when he pushed the movie to miramax or whoever it was the guy who was his producer goes hey um this character this is stan it's supposed to be stan lee right he's like yeah he's like well why don't you just have stan lee play the part and he's like well i don't know stan lee the guy's like i do let me get in touch with him he will absolutely love to do this that's and, amazing you know, yeah other stuff happened but yeah stan lee was like yes i would love to be a part of this i would love to put my face out there and be you know, a, a famous person and all that. And it's, it's like in that, that, that kind of, I, I wouldn't give it all to Kevin Smith for that, but eventually you get when the Marvel cinematic universe and, right, right, yeah. and even the, the other movies that were made by Fox and stuff where they start, um, finally getting good movies off the ground and Stanley starts doing those cameos yeah, and then it gets more and more and he just becomes this larger than life guy uh yeah. two people who and i and i wasn't one of them i wish i was but i just didn't grow up with comics like you said right um those people who grew up reading marvel comics they knew exactly who he was right from reading stan soapbox they knew they they knew the they they did just didn't have a voice to the words or whatever i guess is the best way to put it yeah um and then he just became that larger than life where a household name Mm. Everyone knows Stanley. People watch for the Stanley cameos. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know I was keeping an eye out in Deadpool. Even in fucking DC movies. He did a cameo in the um uh Teen Titans Go movie. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, okay. I can dig it. I mean, who, who I mean, it's Stan Lee, right? Like put yeah. him in everything. Exactly. Like, you know what? I I wouldn't mind. He's it. like the grandpa we always wish we had, all wish right, we had. Yeah. Like let's say we're sitting there watching Don't Breathe. Let's have Stanley walk by the house or something exactly. like you know like he's walk he's out walking his dog, or right, because then he that's how he that's how they did him in Venom. He was out mm-hmm. walking his dog and Venom was and Venom and Tom Hardy were there and they were. I like how I called him Tom Hardy and not Eddie Brock. Yeah, because it's Tom fucking because Hardy. I like Tom Hardy. Right, I really I, like his Eddie Brock. Uh, yeah, his Eddie Brock was. That's awesome. another thing. Did we? Did that ever go up? What the uh, Venom, Venom episode? Yeah. Okay, yeah, that Venom one did. Okay, up, yeah, yeah. So you guys know how uh, 
We we didn't like it. Yeah, it was bad. It was real, real bad. It was one of those things. I think I liked it first, and then as it as it progressed, I liked it less and less. It's the it's the new Transformers. Yeah, it made a butt fuck ton of money overseas. It made more overseas. Its total gross was more than Wonder Woman at this point. Um, wow, which is a fucking travesty because yeah. Wonder Woman is above and it's beyond an a much better movie. Good movie? <laughs> yeah, um, and Venom was kind of like I mean it's it's just generic action, and meh. Yeah, and which I mean you know I will always refer to this movie when you're talking about generic action meh. Mm-hmm. I will always I will always praise sing the praises of this movie. Shoot 'em up as a good general generic action yeah. flick. Cuz it's There's, just when I say that I guess I guess I shouldn't say generic action flick of just fun. I mean, because Shoot 'em up was fun. Yeah. Venom was, was, fun. was not fun. At, at there were so many points where it started dragging. Yeah. The chase scene goes on for fucking ever. Yeah. The f- end fight is like I said Transformers. You can't tell what's happening. It's just two blobs of CGI hitting each other and then randomly two guys like, having a fist fight. Yeah, like which was almost it was hilariously stupid. Yeah, it would occasionally sit there and like and yeah. you see like the the symbiotes like separate and Tom Hardy would throw a punch at whatever this dude. I don't know the actor's name who played this villain, but yeah, well, like whatever um, he was. Yeah, I, I like the actor. I, I can't remember his name off the top of my head too, but oh my god, them their fight that was just comically, just just fucking stupidly funny. It not 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 good. Yeah, that uh, whole. And you know what though? It's over, Luke. We don't have to. Do I know. It we don't I have know. to live it again. It's fine. It's, it's one over. of those it's things behindest. where I'm like disappointed that yeah. it's just. It, it's it's made so much money because I would hope that I was hoping that you if know it what? did bad they would do something better with it. You know what also made a bunch of money? Uh-huh. Suicide Squad. So that's got to tell exactly. you that, that's all that matters. Suicide it's Transformers, terrible. Suicide Squad, this Venom movie. Meh. Um, I don't know. I I doubt. Uh, it, judging by the way the MCU has been done, yeah. Um, the, I doubt the money would make them no. look at it and be like, no. yes, this is what we want. No. I mean, who knows? Maybe, but I doubt it. I, I think... mean, that's one thing that Disney, I think, is doing well. Like, they're yeah. oversaturating us with Star Wars, but they're managing Marvel fine. Like, I'm sick of Star Wars. After yeah. Episode Eight. I don't want to see any more Star Wars movies. I didn't even pay attention to Solo, and I heard it wasn't very good. Um, I've heard it was one of the best. It was, it was up there in terms of the new Star Wars movies, which is sad because it didn't make any money because... Everyone is after a, there's a eight? lot of people who are done after eight and Rogue One. After the pilot, I liked Rogue One, but Rogue, Rogue One, one was, fine, was yeah. like 90% of boring, and then finally the last 40 minutes were good, and the last there five was a, minutes were the best. There was a lot of story up until, and then the third act was where shit yeah. got serious. And but like the first two acts were just blah 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 blah, random okay, this, bits of action. This is somewhat interesting. Okay, Poe's being cool. Or not Poe, uh, whatever the guy's name. And then you mm-hmm. had uh, you had uh, Donnie Yen. Anytime he was on screen, that was that was fantastic. And Jen, Jen, I thought Jen was cool. Um, but it, I mean, it did ultimately it didn't matter. Yeah, it was no. all pretty much just boring. Like you were waiting for stuff to happen. Yeah. And then at the end, it did, and it was great. There was a better space battle in that than there has been in any of the uh, the two main movies. And then it's over. Right. Pretty much. Well, yeah. I mean, then you have the the best parts of the movie with right. the battles at the end, and then Darth Vader being the best sequence, the best uh, eighteen the best of the seconds best. of cinema. Yes, like because he just pops up, he <sighs> throws his lightsaber, he throws to one dude, he slices the other guy. I'm gonna go the lasers back at the other dude. I'm gonna go watch that. Like when I go home, I can just watch that clip over and over again. But yeah, yeah I mean, that's why it, they they're done with the side stuff, which I'm happy because now they're focusing on okay. We're going to make stuff for our app, right? For the Disney, whatever the fuck it's going to be called, app. Um, and the, the service, the Disney yeah. Plus service. Yeah. So we've already got this combined with the Marvel stuff, where we're going to get a Falcon and Winter Soldier show, right? Um, we're and using the actual actors from the yes. movies, which is the best big part. budget. Like that was one of those things that, like, like when they trans, like uh, other Disney's things that have mm-hmm. popped up, um, like. Like, Emperor's New Groove, I think, is one of the best Disney flicks ever, right? This is a great I movie. I fucking love that movie. Anytime mm-hmm. it's on, no matter what, I will stand, I will stop and watch it. Mm-hmm. And when they when they announced they were doing the animated show, I'm thinking, oh, hell yeah. yeah. More more of that movie, but in that show, more. Give me more. Yeah. 
And then you get there and it's some generic dude doing Cusco's voice. You don't have John Goodman it's, doing... The shows uh, were never as good. Yeah, you, know, you don't have John Goodman doing... Oh, no. oh, oh uh, the, the Village. I can't remember The Village. I don't remember his name. Well, I should because I just villager. watched the movie like two weeks ago because I love it. So, yeah, it's like... Yeah, it's a... And they did. I I've never been excited for a Disney animated series, um, because I learned very young that they would never live up to right. the movies. Like I liked the Aladdin show; I thought it was good. Now here we're on another fucking completely different topic. Well, yeah, but the I Aladdin liked... show did use the original actor for the show, at least for a little while. They Aladdin, did, they, they did, might have, they, but they, I don't think they had anyone I mean, yeah. else. Aladdin, like they did not have. I, I did specifically uh, Aladdin, uh, Jasmine, and. The rest of the characters, the only one they didn't have, they did not have Robin uh, Williams for the voice of Genie. They, they didn't did, have. Um, they did. I, I know they, they had, didn't have Iago either because that's uh, yeah, Gilbert Godfrey. Yeah, Gilbert, but, they didn't have Gilbert Godfrey, but they did. Yeah, have, I think they uh, only had was Aladdin and, and Aladdin Jasmine. Jasmine as Maybe. the Sultan. They had the Sultan from from the movie. Either way, the, that was about the best they ever did. Whoever did. A booze voice they had that guy it's like, <laughs> the fucking monkey yeah um but yeah that was about the best they ever did plus the story was actually pretty good yeah no it was just it was just aladdin going it on was, adventures man it was but, it was nice uh, like from there on it goes downhill lilo yeah. and stitch was okay i was a little old for that one anyway but i did watch some of the lilo and stitch show and it wasn't terrible um, but i can't say emperor's I new that. groove emperor's new groove was pretty yeah. fucking bad i mean it wasn't it wasn't Venom levels bad. No, no, no. Like, it was for Disney TV shows, yeah, it was Disney. pretty bad. Yes, yeah, because um, Disney says that Hercules, high Hercules in fucking high school. Mm-hmm. That abs because it's one of those things where it's like you take this character and oh now we're going to turn them into the fucking punchline and yeah. ruin the character. Yeah, and it's like, but I I want to watch Hercules to see fucking Hercules be awesome, not watch him when he's the awkward skinny fucking doofus like idiot kid in high school like getting shot on all the time i think that's gonna be the title of the pod doofus the idiot kid in high school exactly it was like it's like why would i want to watch this depressing shit yeah <laughs> like no, I, I get you man uh it was awful yeah for um, sure. no i don't remember any of the other disney shows. disney had i mean okay so most of the shows that i remember started off as shows and then yeah. were later made into movies like ducktales and tales and stuff like that yeah ducktales like, was great oh my god yeah i, I the new ducktales is good too is it yeah, yeah that's good i mean watch the first episode the cat voice cast is absolutely amazing i want i think i think i remember hearing something about them getting originals at least a lot of the originals not no, all no, of no, them. no they're new they're all, all new, new but they're all like legit comedians right, um right. The fucking the doctor that everyone loves from doctor who uh david tennant name? david tennant yeah oh. he is um is he uh he might be scrooge i mean he does he, he does he he's does either scrooge or... mcduck or he's the scottish duck the bad guy. I mean, that sounds like something he would do because he, he, he has a he has accent. A, he's legitimately got he he's, he's legitimate, he, off, he's legitimate Scott. Really yeah, like um, but yeah, the cast is actually really really good. The show's entertaining. Um, I but, mean, I've seen clips of it. It looks good. Mm-hmm. The animation style is a little a little goofy, I think, but it fits it really well because it's, it's Disney yeah. and it needs to be it, it needs to be goofy and weird and fun mm-hmm. and childlike, which is you know that's what it should be. Um, I don't know. I'm. I, it, Speaking of all this, like going back to, I want to see things like um, them do Star Wars series on their app that are yeah. serious the way I'm hoping the Falcon and uh, Winter Soldier move the show is. Yeah. yeah. Um, Sprinkle some goofiness in there. But you, yeah, you can do some goofiness, but they're doing um, Mandalorian. Man, uh, what are they calling it? They're doing a bounty hunter show. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't remember if it's called Mandalore or if it's what it's called, but it's, uh, it's like uh, apparently about Boba Fett. Uh-huh. Which is cool, since right. we're not going to get a Boba Fett movie. Which, Hopefully, I mean, that was one of the things with Boba Fett is that he was badass because he was mysterious. No, no, yeah, well, partially because he was mysterious. Mostly, he was badass because he had a badass toy. Yeah, and <laughs> you know, he, and then in the movie, he's there for thirty seconds, and then he gets killed. And gets killed because uh, fucking Han Solo, a blind Han Solo, smacks the back of his jetpack. And he crashes into the Sarlacc pit. That's amazing. Like, yeah, well, yeah. He's this character that they hyped. That everyone got hyped up because of a toy that had a, a rocket. Well, launcher. everybody got hyped up because in the movie of all, like, like it's Darth Vader. Like, Darth, Darth Vader, Vader points him out and says no disintegrations. Yeah, 
And like it's one of those things where like if Darth Vader's like, okay, you are too extreme, yeah, that's pretty badass, right? Yeah, like, you expect some cool shit out of this character. And then he gets swallowed by the Sarlacc two minutes later, like, oh, yeah, well, fuck and then you, he's dude. just gone. <laughs> and then his, then Jango Fett comes along in the prequel. Oh, it's like, God. what is this shit? Is it was it Stan Lee? So okay, I don't remember who the quote is attributed to, right. but I absolutely love it. And Kevin Smith said it a few times. I've heard it other places where. Um, Every character has a backstory, and no one gives a fuck. Right. Backstories aren't entertaining. No. Not do not do prequels. Do no. not t- do not fucking explain away where the alien comes from. Do not fucking give Boba Fett's Metaclorians. Jango Fett's father. Yeah. Just don't fucking do it. It, it can be there in lore, it was, and that's great. It was perfect Stop as space it. magic. Stop yeah. fucking explaining why. Um, Jason comes back in Friday the 13th. Stop trying to explain why, yeah, why fucking can't he Freddy just be... is uh, part D. Like, no. Fucking don't do it. Yeah, no, I liked it when Freddy was just a child molester who wouldn't die. Who was fucking set on fire. Uh, in by the, the neighborhood. By the neighborhood in the, in the and just, uh, gymnasium. And just kept haunting people. And then comes back to murder children. <laughs> That's what he needed to be. Was exactly. it a gymnasium or was it a barn? Maybe it was a barn. I thought it was the gym. I but maybe, to, it was a, maybe it was like I a barn I seem to think it was like either that. a barn or his house. I don't remember. One of the two. But either way, they set him the fuck fu- on fire. They burned him. They burned him alive. They burned him alive. Which exactly. is great. They did to him what they did to John Wilkes Booth. Yep. Did they burn him alive? Yeah. Uh, wasn't it in a barn? Or? It, that was in a barn. They chased him to the barn. I think he was shot, and maybe it got set on fire. I don't remember. I see. I seem to remember. I thought they, I thought they got captured him and hung him. Maybe. But I, I seem to remember, remember I'm, one of those I, people. I should know because I like history a lot, but yeah. Well, that's what they did to Waco, Waco, Texas. Yeah. That place got set on fire. Right. After the FBI had a huge shootout with the people, and then like a bunch of people got burned alive. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, happy times happy times but, uh, just like when we yeah, were no, spraying I... black people with water hoses and sicking dogs on them yeah crazy fucking shit let's make america great again well i don't know the waco texas How about people you guys nice jobs. fuck yourselves <laughs> but uh yeah no i mean uh back to happy times <laughs> yeah well happier things um not happier things because uh steven hillenberg died yeah, the creator of SpongeBob. Creator of SpongeBob, which you know he's he, he was a marine biologist, and SpongeBob mm-hmm. came from a, a book he he uh, wrote, where yeah, no, this is great. On he, the bikini at all? <laughs> uh, no, he oh. he wrote a book on uh, I, to funny. help people understand something. I don't remember the exact word now, but it mm-hmm. was basically to help uh, help kids understand marine biology and stuff like that, and that eventually became the inspiration for SpongeBob. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, like. I, I didn't know this stuff about these yeah. people, you know, like, and he had ALS. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, was, that sucked, man. Like, that's what he Lived to be 60... 57. 57. Okay. Which I knew he didn't really live. long. I mean... For ALS, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, like uh, the only person that has lasted anywhere near as long is, of course, Stephen Hawking. Mm-hmm. And he he passed earlier, so that sucked. But yeah, yeah. like, it was, it was pretty, uh, you know, it sucked. Because SpongeBob was another part... That, that was less my childhood, though, and more my adolescence. Yeah. I mean, and who, who didn't love SpongeBob? At least the first five seasons. Yeah. I, SpongeBob, when it came out, I still remember the, like, confusion, I guess is the best way to put it behind it. Yeah. Um, at first, it was like, the, I remember Nickelodeon advertising it. Right. And right. people kind of going, what the hell is this? Right. And it was like, it was the next generation, kind of like the spark of the next generation of of Nickelodeon stuff. Right. Where Rocco's Modern Life and Hey Arnold and Two Angry Beavers all, and like Cat Dog, all that stuff was like ending. Yeah. And then that, you, had, uh, you had SpongeBob and. That uh, was kind of like the beginning of, oh, okay, this is the next generation. It's where I, I watched some SpongeBob, but that's where I was like, oh, okay, my time is done. Yeah. Nickelodeon. Like I my stuff is gone or, you know, heading out. Um, and it was like, that was the last thing that I watched a little bit of. SpongeBob and, was great though. Like, it was and then Nickelodeon seriously... was done soon after. Well, years and years and years later, they kind of they killed Nickelodeon Studios eventually and things like that. Right, right. Because um, I mean, I was still I very fondly still remember um, Nickelodeon Studios and all the shows that came out of that and things. But yeah, no, SpongeBob was like this phenomenon for a while where it was everybody was talking about it and watching it. Parents, kids. Uh, teenagers because it was 
It was it, it fit everything. It had yeah. like it had the adult humor that the the, mm-hmm. the adults could go. Ha, 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 ha. But it was so juvenile. Yeah. It was like it was like even more juvenile than things like Beavis and Butthead, and or, or um like Ren and Stimpy. I think it wasn't that, like it wasn't like adult humor it wasn't like crude. that. It wasn't yeah. crude like like those shows where it was it was a uh, it had that nod. Yeah. But it was still innocent enough that it wasn't purpose. Like like the episode where they were using their sentence enhancers, and every mm-hmm. time they said a word, they got a different dolphin call. Yeah, it was that was basically so them good. saying "fuck shit ass" and all yeah. that stuff. Like it, that was that was fantastic, and you know, because it was just it was just so innocent and mm-hmm. so goofy, but so harmless. You know, uh, it was it was definitely interesting because most I still remember I was still. Um, going you know in the church at the time and had that whole influence and they didn't like they didn't get spongebob where they immediately condemned most cartoons right like i i still remember fucking the simpsons was constantly condemned because it had this uh it was oh the idiot father yeah, and the right. the and of course in the, the church, rebellious the son are the patriarch. yeah oh yeah, yeah the yeah. men are supposed to you you they they did that on all sitcoms because most sitcoms the father's an idiot um, right, yeah. But in Bart Simpson being like the most, uh, what did they call him? Like the most dangerous character for kids uh, because he's a rebellious child and all this shit. Yeah, you don't but, want your kids going around saying, Eat yeah, my shorts. SpongeBob, I still remember the most <clears throat> they could come up with was eventually um, saying that it was promoting homosexuality. Which, and, I mean, yeah, I could kind of get that. At, less that it was promoting homosexuality, more that it was just promoting equality. Yeah, who would think? Like, you, there, there was nothing, there was, but there was nothing to it. It was just that they acted like the the colors and, like, the stories and that they were having fun that promoted homosexuality. It was like, what the fuck do you, what, there's hey, you nothing, know what? If being nothing homose- to it. If, if having fun equals being homosexual, I've been gay my whole life. Exactly. It was, it was very, it was, it was funny that they would have, they tried to pull. And I, I don't know. It was that. It was it kind was of stupid in my opinion. Cultural zeitgeist, I guess. Yeah. SpongeBob was huge. Still I mean, is. That happens a lot, though. Like that. Mm-hmm. That exactly what you're saying there. Like that. That is a. That is a thing. SpongeBob's one of those things. He's on that level of Batman, Superman, Mario. Mm-hmm. Um, Instantly recognized. Immediately, yeah. World you start over. saying uh, that's the theme song. And no matter where you're at, people are going to fucking start either humming it or fucking doing the callback. Or oh, they're going to join in. Yeah. yeah like, 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 oh, like any, you, they're going to, everybody knows it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and I love it. So I, I still, still have it. people all the time that fucking start quoting SpongeBob and I'm like, ah, I get that. Yeah. It's just, I do it. Yeah. You know, are you feeling it, Mr. Krabs? And you got to remember, mm-hmm. I, I, I will always respect the writers for this. Mm-hmm. They snuck in a prison rape joke in the middle of this kid's show. <laughs> when there's an episode where he's talking to Gary, trying to get Gary to take a bath, uh-huh. and he's like, uh, "Oh look, the blues! Oh yeah, he don't drop them." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like they they stuck in a prison rape joke in a kid show. I will forever have all the respect in the world for these guys because yeah. you know me, I'm very anti censorship. I love yeah, but they they, they, was they great did for a that, long time. that brilliant thing. I gotta say though, after season five, um, I just kind of lost interest. I don't yeah. know what it was. Maybe because I know my sense of humor hasn't really changed much. It's still the same lowbrow shit <laughs> that it's been since I was like fourteen. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, eventually it does. It's just the, the childness of it. It does kind of wear. Yeah, yeah, um, I, I, I have to agree with that. But you know what? I think uh, I think we should wind it down now. We didn't even talk about everything we wanted to talk about. No, I do real quick want to say Barry. But I, I don't even remember if I talked about it on this podcast. Do but, not buy uh-huh. Fallout 76. Ha, 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 ha. Fuck you, Fallout. Fuck you, Bethesda. God. You goddamn shit-eating twat it's, waffles. It's so bad. It's Fuck it's you guys. So and I, yeah, we t- talked about it on our E3 episode. Fuck them. Yeah. But now it's Called out. Called that shit. Now it's out, and it's, it is exactly what you, you thought it was going to be. You take all the good things of Fallout 4 out of it, and yep. you're just left with bugs terrible combat and an empty fucking world that apparently is a really great world there's just nothing in it that sounds yeah. familiar hey guess what you take out all of the npcs and expect the players to be the npcs players that have been playing a solo fucking game for years expect a solo campaign no what is wrong with you what the fuck were you thinking why 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 did you think that would work the fact that people compare this to a less 
a, a, a worse version of Rust. Yeah. Just wow. I like one. Wow. One of the things that was getting me is that there were people defending it. Yeah. Like n- not defending it with logical things. Like you would. You know, no, they were like it's Bethesda. What it's supposed to be buggy, dude? No. If I buy six dollars for a game, that yeah. fuck game better fucking work. Yeah. No, I I completely expect Bethesda games to be buggy, but not. Like, but that's not an excuse. That's not something yeah, it's not an excuse. Have. It's not something. Yeah, it's not something where I'm like, yeah, well, I'm gonna. Well, I want to play sixty, pay sixty dollars for this buggy shit. No, yeah, I'm paying sixty dollars because while I will have those bugs, I'm gonna probably like expect to have, have a experience. great story. Yeah, still have a great we'll have experience. Some fun with it, exactly. Like, and like, instead, you don't. You, you don't. don't get that. With not this at all. Game. No, it's it's just it's, and did you hear about the uh, the fact the that fucking uh, at false advertising? Yeah, the two hundred dollar oh, yeah. uh, a, a vault edition or whatever mm-hmm. it's called. It, like it's supposed to come with a canvas bag. Like Came with a fucking shitty nylon bag. Yeah, like like come on, man. You think they're not gonna notice that? So here's the there's best. There's a very here's, big difference between nylon and here's you the, don't know the difference between nylon and canvas. Here's what you do: you go to an art store, you feel that canvas thing that that's painted on. That's canvas. You go, and that's not even good canvas. That's yeah. art grade canvas, which is a little bit different from like carrying grade canvas, but it's, it, it applies. You want to know what nylon is? Grab your umbrella. Yeah. That's the difference. Nylon is cheap shit. It's great for waterproofing. Yeah. It's terrible for anything that besides that. Yeah. Make, make, make clothes out of it and make, uh, you know, like I said, umbrellas, maybe like a light rain jacket. You don't make a bag out yeah. of it. So Bethesda's response was great, where the oh, f- first getting... couple people ex- complaining about it, um, the the response was, oh, yeah, originally we intended to have the canvas bag, but it was too expensive. We're not going to do anything about it this time. And Thank then you. And then later on with the uproar, getting, yeah. they're giving out $5 in in game Five, yeah, you get 500 in game of their Model microtransactions. Is, yeah. Which, by the way, the fact that this game came out at 60 fucking dollars, then they had microtransactions added to it. Microtransactions that in Fallout 4, those things would be free, even in game, not with mods. Yeah. Go fuck yourself on that a hundred thousand times over. On top of the fact that you've added microtransactions to this absolutely garbage experience, things like, oh, hey, let me get a fucking neck tattoo for. Like $2, 200 or 500 uh, the, 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 of these points. These the, Everything is, like, microtransactions are bad, period. These are so above and beyond overpriced, it's fucking it's mind-boggling. A, it's abysmal. It's terrible. It is, I was shocked when I saw that. Yeah. I was like, this isn't even comparable to the um, creation, club? creation Club stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck? So with your 500, the most you can get is like a fucking door stop uh, or a door, a door. And I think like a doormat or something a like that. A door and like some plants or something. Yeah. Like plant plants. Decoration. That's what yeah, it is. Yeah, it's like, you can't even get the in-game fake um, canvas bag. Yeah. Like you can't get the mailbag. That mail costs bag. 700. Yeah. yeah. You can't even get the mailbag. Like at least at, if really you're not going to give us the real life mailbag, at least give us the virtual gift bag. Yeah. You Anyone know, like, who did buy bags, this, sorry. by the way, do not accept that because there's going to probably be a class action lawsuit. Yep. And if you accept that 500, you may you, lose your you ability lose to your, join it. Yeah. You yeah. Lose, because you've t- taken the compensation. Yeah. Don't take the compensation do because I want this. I, I can't wait for this class action lawsuit to go through. Oh yeah. That'll be hilarious. It needs to come down on like, I love yeah. Bethesda. I love a lot of the things they've created. Elder Scrolls is one of my favorite game series of all time, but this, this is fucked up. Legitimately. This has made me look back at all of the things and kind of go, I think I, I really love them too much. Yeah. Because you go all the way back to a game like Oblivion. And like I said, I didn't play Morrowind. But Oblivion. The well, Morrowind buggy, is my Oblivion. Yeah, yeah. The buggy, fucking glitch-ridden pile of trash that that game almost was. I mean, it was still a great game. I still fondly remember it. But how much shit was just wrong in that game? Game-breaking bugs and things. Things that they would not update for years. You know, that, that, that actually does um, make me think about that. And maybe it's just the fact that I haven't played it in mm-hmm. a very long time, but I don't remember too many game breaking bugs in Morrowind. Yeah. I know there were a few bugged quests that if you didn't complete them right, you wouldn't be able to advance. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was always easily solved with console commands. But I can't remember anything game breaking. Yeah. Like Skyrim on my Switch actually crashed my Switch, right? Mm-hmm. But. 
I I don't I can't go back and remember. Was there any a time ever, ever a time where Morrowind crashed my PC or where Morrowind crashed my buddy Joe's Xbox? Like yeah. no, I don't. I can't remember that. But I, I and I can't say anything about Oblivion because I never I didn't play yeah. Oblivion enough. But I I know even without mods, there have been multiple dozens and dozens of instances where Skyrim crashed my PC. There yeah. have been instances where Skyrim not only crashed crashed. It brought my entire computer down, and I had to literally turn it off and back on again. Like, yeah, hold the button really down, cool. hard shut down. Like, um, and I mean, that's not even talking about like glitches that will fuck your save. Yeah, completely. Yeah, like there's tons Out, of glitches like that'll... hundreds of hours just gone like that. Yep. I, I mean, mean Skyrim... the unpla- what's that unplayable glitch that turns it so that you can't? You just the game um, starts getting slower and slower and slower. That's and... where. Um... The garbage collection for the game yeah. is completely broken. So, like, if you you know you leave court, and this happened, this actually did happen in Morrowind. There was a blow mm-hmm. bug, but yeah, where you leave corpses, like you you build up enough corpses that for mm-hmm. some reason don't clear out like they should. Yeah. Next thing you know, your your save's corrupted. It gets bloated. It gets it gets crashy. They and had Morrowind that, did suffer from that. Like, they had know. that. They've had that bug from Morrowind all the way to Fallout Four, like uh, Fallout Four and Skyrim. Yeah. They've never fixed that. Um, one thing they did, at least in Morrowind, and I got to give them credit for this, is that, is that there was an ability when you looted a dead body mm-hmm. to also get rid of the body, which was 100% recommended because yeah. if you didn't, it, it would bloat and crash. Yeah. The the amount of shit, it just, it's one of those things like go back and look at Bethesda like, man, you didn't, does you maybe you don't deserve all the praise you were given over they, time. They do not deserve all the praise they, you were given. Like that, that's one thing that I can say. Having bought Skyrim seventeen yeah. times now, I don't know why I keep buying it, but I'm I'm done. Well, I'm they, done with Bethesda. They as a used whole. to be the best open world game. Makers. Yeah, for their sure. games were the best. Even Oblivion, even Skyrim were great. But now, as there's fucking, so many there's as so many... generic as the Ubisoft games are, they're better. You can fucking pop in and play um, you uh, uh, Assassin's Creed uh, Odyssey and not have all these fucking issues. You don't have these bugs. The game Story still has some bugs. Yeah, you've got fucking shitty microtransactions and all the fucking monetization that they try and force on you. But you can go through and, you know, you don't have these issues. What about uh, the Shadow of War and, uh, the, the Shadow of War and uh, the other ones? Yeah. Like those, like, especially since the update for, is it, which one is it? The second? Shadows of War. Shadows of they, War, yeah. They did away with their microtransactions. And now it's and a I mean, game. ignoring that, ignoring that, the game itself was good. is a good game. Yeah, it it good works game. out the box. Um, I mean, it's just, it's like uh, Bethesda Kingdoms can no Memoir, longer, boom. Yeah. I, I Bethesda still can to, no more uh, sit on the same fucking engine. Yeah. The same bullshit. Come on. You got to do something. That's why I'm hoping the fact that we're so far off of Elder Scrolls six, they're like, what at 2020, I think. Uh, yeah. I think 20 is the earliest we'll hear something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that means that's because they're designing the game from the ground up I because really, Bethesda really can't pull their shit anymore. Yeah. Like, like when it comes to open world games, yeah, I will always like this for me. The Witcher Three is the pinnacle. Exactly, of open the Witcher world Three games. is a great like, example. Like GTA Five is is pretty much way up there with yeah. it. But like The Witcher Three for me is still that pinnacle mm-hmm. because you can wander around. It's open world as hell. You can do anything in any order you want, provided you want to do whatever. Yeah, but like it's open world and there's so much to do in the game. It, it's great and like. Of all of the big giant scale games like that I've played, mm-hmm. it's got to be the least buggy. That and game having is a great story, stable. all those things, and why they would think this like um, this we was just a the stupid dick a lot. Don't yeah, we? we have this game was a utter and complete cash grab. Yeah, that's all this was. That's yep. where somebody went, hey, why don't we just fucking throw a multiplayer? Oh well, we'll have to dumb some stuff down. Okay, just tear out everything in fallout 4 and then we'll just create a new map and boom multiplayer it up yep here a fucking complete and total garbage dumpster fire oh, glitches yeah. that they had in fallout 4 from the beginning they knew about them yeah they've known about these glitches the entire time the community fixed those glitches are still in fallout new or fallout um 76 76 yeah that they could have fixed with a fucking patch easily but they still have these glitches what the fuck like the the main boss in the game and the big bosses, those bat giant uh, like uh, mutated bats are fucking Skyrim dragons reskinned, and have the bugs from the Skyrim dragons. That's that, yep. you know what. Let's, I'm let's just let's just 
Yeah, so Bethesda, there. you fucking you you're on you've you've fallen to the likes of Ubisoft and EA. All right, so <laughs> you were the chosen one. <laughs> no, no, CD Projekt Red's the chosen CD one. Red's yeah, no. the chosen one yeah. CD Projekt Red and a, they are. a number of indie, lots indie of studios. other developers. The guys who made Team the Ninja, Spider-Man games, um, um, the guys who made the the fucking uh, wasn't that Insomniac? Yeah, maybe. I want to say that was Insomniac who made the newest Spider-Man game. Yeah, um, which is fantastic. Fucking, the guys who made God of War, like yep. these, yes, they they are. Team Cherry, who made Hollow Knight. Fucking Nintendo's in-game, making great stuff. Yeah. Uh, Pokemon Let's them. Go Eevee, playing the fuck out of that. Love Just, it. that game surprises the hell out of me that I'm enjoying it so much. It really is like, it's, it's just a, going back to playing something from my childhood, but updated with modern stuff perfectly. Yeah. No one, if this game was made by any other company, they would be tearing your wallet apart. The game would be absolutely completely full of microtransactions. Yep. They could rip you off so easily yep. with this game. Yeah, yeah. But pay it's to the... catch this Pokemon instantly. Oh, yeah. yeah. Pay pay to get some more Pokeballs, you're out. Yep. Oh, here, you get a free uh, Master Ball if you buy uh, 600 coins that you can uh, ex- uh, expand your Pokemon bag or fuck blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. Whatever but... the hell. But none of that is in this game. It is pure joy to play that game. Yeah, no, like, nostalgia is a powerful thing, yeah. and it definitely is applying here, but I think even without nostalgia, I'd probably enjoy this game, because it it's just Pokemon. It's Pokemon. That, that's it's literally its what it is. Form. Yeah. And it is, like, there's, you know, you there can be people that are angry about the simplification of it. Totally. It is there. I get that. But there's I'm so much to this game that is fun, um, and almost, like, it's hitting that part of me that wants to, like... Oh, I'm gonna just grind until I get the very best Vulpix or the very best Dratini because I have to get a shiny fucking or the very uh, best Nidoran. Perfect. I fucking yeah. sat there and did that for four hours, got up to eighty something in a chain, and then one yeah. ran away and fucked everything fucked up, and I gave up. up. Yeah, that's why I'm gonna do the so shinies, sad. and I don't, I don't think I'll go for perfect IVs because you have to keep catching them. With shinies, you can just stand there and watch them spawn. Yeah. until a shiny one shows that, up. That's why. That's why. Yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> wait till I complete the Pokedex before I start hunting shinies. Yeah, which I'm close to. I'm like 11 away. And I a... just got an Oddish and Go like yesterday, <laughs> so, so you can transfer that. I over. transfer that motherfucker over, drop it in my party. And keep, On top of that, that's another thing. The, if they wanted floor. to, they could be like, okay, you get so many transfers from Go, and then you pay some money. Mm-hmm. You have to pay money for more. I, it's just nope. They don't do that. Nintendo. Keep going on. Keep keep being awesome. And the Pokeball that you buy with it is fucking cool. It uh, really is. It is cool. I like that I get Mew. That's one thing. The one problem I have with that game, since mm. we're doing a quick review, catching Pokemon in it, um, they should have allowed you to just choose to use the uh, regular controls for it. I think the motion shit is bullshit. You can. You know, you it always has motion. I mean, I, I guess it uses like the gyroscope you can't, to help aim. But yeah, you can't yeah, use I mean, you can't just use a pro controller. Yeah, that um, that I do not like. Yeah. Like, and, and the thing about that is like, like the pro controller has. All that tech in it. It right? has the gyro in it too. Yeah, so they like, should like still there, be there was no it. reason why they couldn't have allowed you to play it. Yeah. So I do find Except that. Except for the one. fact that they said, like the, the creator said, we're forcing the motion controls on you because if we didn't, people wouldn't use them. Yeah, no shit. Because motion's not in, not all that enjoyable, especially when it's something where you have to specifically get it to work right to catch these Pokemon. Although, I gotta say, using the ball to throw isn't nearly as terrible an experience as I thought it was going to be. No, it's not as bad as using the Joy-Con, but it's still not great. Yeah. Multiple times I've, I've fucking swung the ball and it's just fucking, oh, the Pokeball went wide right. Right. <laughs> I didn't I didn't move my yeah, arm to the right game. So, so figuring that out. So yeah. figuring that out. All right. Let's seriously wind it down. We can wind right? this down. Though, yeah, guys. yeah. Because, uh, I mean, we've gone on for over an hour and 20 minutes. Hey, we should. We should have done like a four hour to make up for all the shit we missed. I, I don't have time for a four hour, man. Oh, I don't either. I gotta work tonight. <laughs> yeah, we both do. So oh. I'd, I'd like to get to bed soon. And um, <laughs> But I no hope you guys enjoyed this. You know, this is our first time legitimately back in studio in a yep. while. And it's been about a month since we've lost or since we, we posted an episode. At, really sorry about that. Yeah. It's just. Thing shit happened, life got in the way, but now, you know, hopefully things you guys are now. still out there listening, you know, come back, check us out. <clears throat> yeah, we're back. We still have all the same social media and yep. crap out there. Yep. Patreon. Hey, give, give us, us a buck. buck so I can pay off this fucking switch board. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, we, we need money. Give us more. <laughs> Give us the money. Give us the money. It doesn't even need to be much. Like like we say, a dollar. Give us a yeah. dollar. Like or out of that least... dollar, we'll only get like 76 cents because there's fees. But hey, that's Even fine. if you don't listen to the like the iTunes uh, version of the podcast, go fucking download it and rate it on iTunes. I mean, yeah. Do uh, do that for us. Help do us that out. For us. Yeah, and Spread of course, the word. We're on Google Podcast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Retweet, we're on TuneIn Radio. Share us on Facebook. Well, though TuneIn Radio is a little weird because their player has malware in it, so that's fun. Uh, I don't know Fuck if their I don't know if their apps have it, but I know yeah. that the embedded player that I had has some malware. Yeah, popped up as a malware warning from a malware bytes of like, oh, okay, oh, cool. that's annoying. Yeah, and of course it probably gets blocked by ad blockers. So I was like, you know what? I don't want anything. I want this site to be pure and clean. So. Pure, pure. I'm, All right, I'm guys. Just like me, man. So. Yep. Uh, you know, that's it for us. You know, mm-hmm. ungodlygeeks.com, patreon.com slash ungodlygeeks. Give us money. Yep. Go share us on social media, twitter.com slash ungodlygeeks. You know, <laughs> follow us. We follow back. Yeah. And I tweet dumb shit all the time. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, guys. For the Ungodly Geeks, I was Joe. I was Luke. Let's have a good day. Fuck you, Bethesda. Fuck you, Fallout. Mm-hmm.